Hey, what's going on guys? Mike here, back in the aquarium lab. Today I wanna to take you through the process that I like to do when attaching moss and moss-like plants to things like rocks and driftwood. So I have a few rocks here, I have a piece of driftwood, and I also have some rickia, a moss-like plant. I have four bags of it that I recently got in. And I also have some java moss over here, a couple clumps. So we can attach these plants pretty much the same way. Um, and we're gonna do it to a few different things. Before we get started, you do wanna make sure you have a few things. Obviously, you need your moss or your plants or whatever. You need the things to attach them to being, you know, rocks, driftwood, whatever. It doesn't matter their shape or size or anything. There are no real rules to that. Um, but you also wanna make sure you have a little bit of super glue. It can really come in handy. And you want some scissors to cut your fishing line, which we're gonna use primarily to attach these things. You don't always need the fishing line, but in some cases you do. So let's go ahead and get started here. We're gonna first off go with the rock, and we're gonna add our rickia. So rickia is a really cool plant. It looks like a moss, it grows like a moss, but it's technically a plant. So, you take this out of the bag. If you've never used this stuff before, it's a, uh, you know, like I said, it looks like a moss, but it has a really bright green color, and you know, it's a plant that likes a little bit higher light. It does have a tendency to grow algae on it, you know, if your tank isn't balanced or you have an imbalance of something in your aquarium, but uh, nonetheless, it's just an awesome plant to work with. Takashi Amano, you know, made it famous, like with a lot of other plants, and I'm really excited to get this in a tank. So, um, this is a plant, like I said, that is gonna wanna be attached to something. Uh, you can float it up at the top of your aquarium and it'll grow quite well there. It's a good way to grow it out and get more of it. Um, but we wanna attach it to these rocks. And I have a few more rocks. Um, so when we attach them, we can then space these rocks out close together and almost make like a carpet out of it, which is sort of my end goal. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is decide you know, which surface, or I guess which side you wanna put. It's smashed kind of like a pancake and either side is going to, to work fine. There's really no up or down to this plant. So this is actually kind of a perfect piece for this rock. I'm gonna pretty much cover the entire rock with this little chunk here. If you had a smaller rock, you know, you can easily just break this piece up into two or three or four, or however many pieces you want. So we're just gonna set that on the rock and then we're gonna grab our fishing line. And that's how we're gonna attach the rickia. Uh, we don't you know, wanna just use super glue on this because this is a pretty thick mass. And just using super glue isn't gonna work with this plant. You wanna use fishing line and you wanna do a ton of it on here. So I'm gonna pull out a really long section, much more than I think I need, and then cut it off here. And then we can begin. So my trick for this, you know, especially if you're tying to like a round rock, it's really easy to, to mess this up and have it slip off the sides and whatnot. Um, and you know, anytime you use fishing line, it, you can get frustrated really easily, at least I do. Um, but here's a little trick that I like to do is I have my side that has the plant on it. I'm gonna flip it over and it's okay for the rock to sit on that. Nothing bad's gonna happen. I'm gonna take one end of the fishing line and I'm actually gonna super glue it into place here. So a little bit is running off here. I don't know if you can see that. Um, but then I'm gonna super glue this into place. This is just some gel super glue. And what that's gonna do is it's just gonna help hold, you know, hold the fishing line in place and just make my life a lot easier. Um, I don't have to hold one end of it with my finger while I'm wrapping around the rock several times. That also works. So we're gonna let that dry. So once this is dry, we're just gonna flip it over here and we're gonna begin wrapping the fishing line around the rock and the rickia. And again, I said, you know, pull out a lot of fishing line because we're gonna go over this thing, I mean, like 20 times. So pull out a ton of fishing line. You wanna hold this stuff on here really good. Um, going, you know, too tight or using too much fishing line is pretty much impossible in my opinion. Um, the better it's on there, the better everything's gonna work out for you. So we're just gonna go around this thing, you know, more than a few times. It gets a little tricky once you get down here on the ends because again, this rock is sort of a, you know, it's like an oval shape. Um, so our fishing line's gonna slide off the side here. So what we're gonna have to do is double back and then we're gonna have to uh, go the lengthwise of the, of the rock. So let's just come back here. 
get this corner, and then we'll switch over and go over the top. And I actually ran out, oh, no, do I have a little bit left? No, I do have a little bit left. Um, I'm gonna go around here a couple times. So now we have really good coverage, and we hopefully are gonna end up with the last bit of the fishing line on the back of the rock here, which I think we are. So now we're gonna flip it over and we have our piece that's left over here on the end and we're just gonna do the same thing. We're gonna super glue that back to the back. And then we don't have to worry about tying a knot or you know getting super frustrated while doing that. That's definitely something that, that happens to me. So using this method is, is definitely my favorite. Of course you can just tie it if you want. So when that's all dried out, then you're pretty much all ready to go. You know, you have this flat piece of rickia, you know, it's smushed down a lot, but once we put this in the water and we give it a few days to start growing up, we're not gonna see any of this fishing line. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a few more rocks and then we'll go put these in a tank and I'll show you kind of the look that I was going for with these. The last of my rocks are now dry and so we're gonna go ahead and throw them in the tank into the 125 and I'll show you what I mean by the kind of carpeting effect you can make with these rocks. So I'm gonna grab these. So I already have two, the first two that I made in the tank, and they're so bright green, guys, that when I get any closer, my camera freaks out and just goes crazy on them. But look at how bright green those are. You can see just how much that can add to escape contrast-wise. So here we have one new piece, and I'm gonna go ahead and try and stand on a chair and a little ladder thing at the same time. And we'll set it in here. And you can see all of the little leaves coming off of it as we put it in. Totally normal, happens every time. Let me go ahead and grab the other two pieces. You can see here that, you know, the rickia, it doesn't look perfect right after we, you know, tie it on there. It's not gonna look super great. A lot of the leaves are pushed over to the side so we can see, you know, lower on the plant where there's been, you know, yellowing. And that's all gonna go away as the plant grows. But you can see here my idea is that we stack all these rocks sort of next to each other, and eventually what'll happen is this will sort of just turn into almost one big mound, you know, with varying heights due to the position of the rocks. So just a really kind of a unique way to aquascape, I think. And again, you're just you're creating an awesome contrast with your greens. You know, as we look back here and we look at the dark green of the Pinnatophyta and the lighter green of the java fern up there, but then you have the super bright green of the rickia. And these aren't gonna stay here in this tank, guys. I'm just, you know, using it as an example. I wanna use these in escape that I'm gonna be making here in my fish tank office in the next month, but I thought it would be a pretty good place for them to hang out and grow out a little bit and get looking really good. So again, this method can be done with pretty much anything that you can attach to stuff. Over here I have some dilapidated moss balls that have been split, and so you could do the same thing with those with rocks, driftwood, and that's what we're gonna do next with some java moss. We're gonna attach that java moss basically the same way to some driftwood. Here we have just a piece of manzanita driftwood. Gotta give a shout out to manzanitadirect.com, my go-to place for this kind of stuff. Um, this is some stuff that they sent me a long time ago, but I'm still finding uses for this wood because it's awesome. Um, so what we're gonna do is pretty much the same thing. Now, uh, when it comes to a piece like this, obviously you gotta keep your aquascape in mind and what you're trying to do, but I like to think like, okay, how is the wood gonna be positioned? Basically, where's the top gonna be? Because that's where I wanna put my moss. So let's say I'm gonna stick this into, you know, the substrate or, you know, whatever, a rock and this is gonna be my top point. This is where I wanna put the moss. I don't wanna have it you know, down below because it's not gonna get really any light. Um, and you, know, you can do as much as you want. You can have it snake along you know, this whole piece, but I think for this example, we're just gonna stick with a small area and I'll show you how I do it. This, you don't need to use the super glue. I find it a lot easier um, with tying because we're just going you know, around a stick. We don't have to worry about anything sliding off. So all we have to do is grab some moss and put it on. You don't need to go super thick. Um, I have a lot of moss here, so I'm probably going to use more than I normally would. Or no, I'll use I'll use a normal amount. This is this is good enough. You have to remember, you know, things are going to grow. So don't you know you don't have to be impatient. If you don't have a lot of moss, this stuff can be expensive. So we'll just do a little section like this along the top, and we find some fishing line. Maybe we can find a piece that was cut that's going to be long enough. I think that might work. 
For this, I'm just gonna start here on one end, and I'm gonna place my finger on it. Hopefully my moss will stay put here. Never likes to behave when the camera's on. And now I'm just gonna start wrapping. And you know, I'm not going super tight. Oh, there it goes. But I am going pretty tight. It doesn't really matter, you know, you, you're not gonna be uh, hurting the moss by, you know, wrapping too tight, I guess you'd say. Nothing bad's gonna happen. So we'll reattach this piece here. Hopefully it'll behave now. And we're gonna go and wrap it around. And you can go just a couple times, your first go around. But then you're just gonna double back. Just keep going. And then our piece that we didn't secure is, you know, hanging off here, not, not in place, but that's okay. We'll just pull that tight. This is where the super glue can help, help keep things in place. And we're gonna double back around where that piece is, um, the, the beginning line where we started, and that should hold it in place as we just keep double backing around this thing. So there we go, we got it. And now we're just gonna keep going back until our line runs out. Again, use, you know, cut a piece of fishing line that's really long so you don't run into the problem of coming up short. And now what we're gonna do is just get to a natural stopping point here at the end, I think that's good enough. And I'm just going to cut my line, it's not super long, there goes my super glue. And then we can super glue this little end piece to the wood. We can super glue this end piece to the wood or we can just make a knot with the other little piece of fishing line that we started with that's hanging off here. So, or you can do both like I like to do. Once I get the knot on there, take a little drop of super glue and that'll just ensure that it doesn't go anywhere. Cut off the ends and you're all done. Now let's go ahead and put this moss stick in the tank so you can see how it looks. And of course it's not a waterlogged piece of wood so it's gonna float. No worries, you could just leave it like that. There's no harm in doing that. But uh, just so you guys can get a better look at it, you know, it doesn't look great, again, because we just tied it, but that's okay, you know, give it a couple weeks and it's gonna look really, really good. And you can see that we got the top portion pretty much all covered. And if we were to fix this into the substrate somewhere and have it be like a tree branch or something, that would look pretty good. I think that's gonna wrap it up for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Maybe it got you motivated to try some new stuff out, get your hands on some Rickia, it's a really, really cool plant, or just get some Java moss and try attaching it to rocks and driftwood because it can really, really help out your aquascape. Don't forget to also check the link down in the description for Aquapro's t-shirts. Thank you so much to everybody who's bought one so far. It helps the channel out a ton, and I, I can't thank you guys enough. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new, and we'll see you guys in the next video.